Praise the Lord. So glad you joined us today. I am Apostle Linda Laracy, and today I want to bring another message on spiritual warfare. I keep hearing from God for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And as I began to meditate on that, uh, I began to look at this month. It's a strategic month in the Hebrew. This is the month of Savan. It is the month of which the Holy Spirit was given. And we know that it is the power of the Holy Spirit that anoints us to do battle. We cannot go into a spiritual battle without the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the things that slips uh, Christians up. They, they try to move and get victory, but they're doing it through their own ability. They're doing it through their own voice. They, they are not doing it through the authority that they have in Jesus Christ. So as we look at the month of Savan, we have some uh, clues to what this month is all about. The uh, Hebraic alphabet, uh, the letter that signifies this month is Zain, and Zain has the numerical value of seven. It's the seventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it has the numeric value of seven. So when we look at seven, we understand in the Hebrew mindset, it means completion, uh, divine perfection. It means that you're maturing, you're coming up to another level of maturation. And so in this month, we need to understand that the Lord is wanting us to come into perfection. And one way is to understand that we are men and women of war. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ is known as a man of war. He is the commander in chief of heaven's armies. And heaven's armies are the angels of the Lord. And we are to allow Christ, we are to submit to Christ. And as we do that, we're going to ride the horse with the Lord. We're going to go into battle and we are assured of victory. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. But this has to be a mindset that you have to have. And sometimes it takes a lot of shaking off of the old and to come into the new one skin of the Holy Spirit to understand who you really are. So when we look at the letter uh, Zane, what does it mean, Zane? It actually means three things. It means crown, it means weapons, and it also means sustain. So I began to meditate on that. I said, you know, that is absolutely perfect. Because as we go into battle, into a spiritual battle, we must wear our crown. We must understand who we are, that we are kings. Yes, we are. The scripture says that we are actually kings and priests because we are now in the kingdom of God. We are not of this world. Our kingdom is not of this world, but it is of the kingdom of heaven. And as we live on the earth, we understand that we are advancing the kingdom of God. So we wear the crown that Christ gives us, the crown of righteousness. But we also take up weapons. Again, I kept hearing this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we have to come to the point where we understand that we are in a battle. And you can't kid yourself. And you can't have the mindset of, well, you know, this just is the way it is. Nothing's ever going to change. When I get to heaven, things will be better. That's not the mindset you should have on the earth. Your mindset is that you're here to change things. You're here to bring in the kingdom of God, particularly in the lives of people. People need the Lord. And because people have been oppressed by Satan, because they are under the captivity of the devil, because the devil is a thief, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And these people are connected to you, you know them, you care about them, now you have to go to battle for them. But before you can do battle for other people, you gotta do battle for yourself, because the devil is out 
to paralyze you and to get you to a mindset that you are helpless. But we know that is not true. You know why? Because God is our helper. And if the Lord is our helper, who in the world are we to be afraid of? So we constantly have to look at our mind and we have to bring in uh, under captivity every thought that is not in line with the word of God. We have to bring into captivity all of our thoughts to obey the Lord. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 5 and 6. So we have to do battle with what is going on in our mind. And once our thoughts are in line with the Lord, then we're able to move out very, very strongly in intercession for other people. So this is a month to wear our crown, to have our weapons, and to know that we are sustained in battle. We're going into battle with a crown on our head, with the weapons by our side, knowing that we are sustained by the Lord. Savan is definitely a month of reigning in warfare, sustained by God. Uh, 2 Samuel 11, 1, in the spring, at the time when kings go off to war. Now, we look at that prophetically. This is a time, Saban came in uh, in the month of May, so it's in the month of spring. Uh, we are on the shoulders. We've just come out of spring, but we're in that season of going to warfare. The kings go out to war in the spring, and you're a king. So prophetically, we're looking at now that this is the time when we start moving forward by divine intelligence. In other words, we're not going to anchor ourselves in our own abilities, in our carnal mind, in our human abilities, uh, in our soul realm, through our own reasoning and through our own intelligence. No, there is a higher intelligence, which is the mind of Christ, and it is divine. It's not human. And so we move by the wisdom of God. We reflect, if you will, the wisdom of the Lord through our spirit man. And the spirit of the Lord in our spirit man will be able to move us into victory, into battle, knowing that we go in already victorious. We are to wear our crown and we are to realize that the Lord has given us that authority to reign on the earth. Romans 5, 17, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You will never be a, a reigner in this life. You can't wear your crown. You're going to allow somebody to steal your crown if you have a victim mentality. Now, you have to understand that Jesus dying on the cross, his blood shed for you, opened up a way for you to receive his righteousness, not by any works that you've done. It's simply by agreeing with what Christ did for you on the cross. Now we have the gift of righteousness in our life. And as we know that, and as we move in that, we can wear that crown of righteousness so that when we go into battle, we know we're going into battle with the authority of the Lord. Luke 10, 19, behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. So when you understand who you are in Christ, when you understand that the Lord God Almighty is your daddy and that he is the king and you are a king's kid, when you understand that and you believe that in your spirit, you can go into battle as the kings go into battle every spring, knowing that you're going to triumph because you're not going in your own authority, but you're going in with the authority of Christ, the authority that Jesus has given you. And it treads over that authority, treads over serpents and scorpions. We know that 
serpents and scorpions are prophetic images of the devil. And Jesus makes this point clear when he says that over all the power of the enemy. So look in your life right now and see where the enemy is winning. And that is the area where you need to do battle in. Now, now some of you have personal battles. I'm talking to people. You're dealing with uh, issues with your family, perhaps with your children, perhaps with your grandchildren. You may be dealing with issues with your marriage. You may be dealing with issues with poverty, with finances. Areas where you know the devil has come in and he's stolen from you. You may be dealing with your own mental issues where the enemy has come in and he has run um, roughshod in your life. And he will do that. He is a marauder. He does not respect boundaries. He does not honor boundaries. He, can't, he comes in like a thief to steal. The devil will never restore anything to you. Jesus is the restorer. But you're going to have to learn how to deal with the devil. Now, I also know, and I, re I really want to make this point, the Lord needs his people right now, the body of Christ, to rise up. We're in a crucial time. This is an area of time corporately where the body of Christ has to rise and do battle over America because the devil is after uh, our nation, values on which our nation was built. Uh, he's coming to steal these things so that we will find ourselves as other nations that are without God, that are bereft of godly ways to move. And we must do battle now for our country because righteousness exalts a nation. Violence never exalts a nation. Dictatorship never exalts a nation. Ungodly principles never exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. And the Lord is calling upon his children that know how to pray to daily take up their sword and move now to deal specifically with our country. So we have personal issues, but we also have corporate issues that we are going to warfare for in this time. Revelation 3, 11 through 12 says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no man may take your crown. Look at that. You've got a crown. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to move. And when I move, I'm going to move quickly. So you got to hold fast to your crown. Don't let go of the crown. Don't allow somebody to take your crown. Don't allow any person to seize or to steal your crown. Your crown represents your authority. Your crown represents that you are to reign over your circumstances in this life. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. We're talking about an overcoming faith. You go into battle knowing that you already have the victory. You're moving actually from the victory, not to the victory. That's very important. So in any area of battle that you're uh, focused on, just already get it in your spirit. You already have the victory. Now, in the seen realm, in the physical realm, you might not see victory, but it's already there because you are promised the victory. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14 now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. So go ahead and thank God because you already have the triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the mindset that you have to have. So you got to wear that crown in the battle. You got to know that you are actually reigning, that you are the king in the Lord and that when you do battle, the Lord Jesus has already given you authority to tread over the devil. The devil's already lost. He lost it all through the cross. When Christ died on the cross, the Lord actually devastated, took away from Satan his power to molest and his power to kill, uh, to steal, to destroy. 
but he moves by deception upon the earth. And if you believe the law, you'll be thinking that the devil is in charge. No, the devil's not in charge. God is in charge. And because you're aligned with the Lord Jesus Christ, you also will get on the charge. You will move forth and charge into battle knowing you've got the victory. So how do you charge into battle and what weapons do you use? Well, we know that in this month of Savan, the letter Zang, which numerically is the number seven, means completion, maturity, you're going to have to know how to use a weapon. Zang means also weapons. So when we're looking at battle, one of the greatest strategical weapons you're going to use is the sword of the spirit. Now, the sword of the spirit is very important because it's actually the weapon you use when you go on the offense. In other words, when you start attacking the enemy, you've got to use the sword. When you want to cut off the devil, when you are uh, clearing the path for the word to get through to people, you have to use the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. And the sword of the spirit is going to come out of your mouth. You're going to have to vocalize and declare God's word. That is the sword of the spirit. It's the rhema word. It's the spoken word. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? mighty in God for a pulling down of strong holes. It casts down arguments, the strife of words, every imagination that exalts itself against the most high God. This is what the weapons of our warfare does. It's, it's going to cut off things that you cannot see see with your physical eye where the real battle is is in the spiritual realm and so you cannot fight carnally and think you're going to win people will argue with you people will fuss with you people will get in strife with you the worst thing you can do is engage with the devil when people are speaking things that are lies whether they're speaking them outwardly around you or whether they're speaking to you face to face don't engage what you do is you take the sword you speak the word of God and then you go on you don't get into a morass of fighting this is why you cannot beat the devil with his intelligence in a human natural way you you're not that smart and i know people uh they're vessels of the devil and they're going to speak words to you you're going to hear things on television that's going to get your blood to boil don't go there you have to withdraw from that your battle is not with flesh and blood but it's with spiritual principalities and powers of darkness so you have to stay engaged with where your real battle is our fight is not with human beings. Um, our fight is a, the good fight of faith, and it is an unseen battle. That's why we have to have faith moving against the enemy. So we have to stay focused. 1 Corinthians 9.26, Apostle Paul is saying, Therefore, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like I'm beating the air. He understands who his enemy is. And that's what we have to keep in mind. Amen? We've got to keep that in mind. Because if we don't, we are going to lose. And the Lord wants you to keep yourself focused in God. Amen? So where is your battle right now? Look at it. Be focused with it. Don't get distracted by what people may be saying to you. Ephesians 6, 17, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You can't get around this. A lot of Christians don't even know what God's Word says. 
you have to begin to study the word. Sometimes the Lord will just give me a whole passage to take up and I'll literally open the word. And when I'm doing warfare, I'll just read the word of God. I'll speak the word of God out into the airwaves, knowing that I'm speaking it uh, on the attack of what the devil is doing in our country or with people that the Lord has brought into my life brought into my sphere of influence to do battle for, to intercede for. I'll take the word and I'll use the word as my sword to deal with the enemy. And you have to do the same thing. This is very, very powerful. I want you to think of this. The sword is really the only weapon that the word says that we use offensively. So when you go on the offense, you're running into battle. You're not defending yourself against the enemy. And much of the weapons of our warfare are defense weapons. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. We have to put on the armor, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. We have to do all this. We have to take up the sword of the spirit, which is our offensive weapon. But on the same way, we have to take up the shield of faith, which is a defensive weapon which is going to quench every fiery dart of the devil see the devil also attacks you with fiery darts and what are those those are lies those are words that you are hearing in your mind and if you let a lie linger long enough in your thought life it's going to get in there and it's literally going to steal from you Lies have a way of permeating your whole belief system. You have to take up your shield of faith, with it, which is a defensive weapon, to literally quench that. And you do that by saying, no, I don't believe that, devil. You're a liar. I don't believe what you're telling me right now. I'm not going to receive that. I'm going to cast that down. And how do you do that? Well, you use the word of God as an offensive weapon. So if you have fear coming on you, if you're getting words like, well, you're helpless, you can't do this, this is, you're going to lose this battle, you just begin to hear God's word, for the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear. So you begin to speak that. You say, no, devil, you're a liar. God's not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me what? He's given me love. He's given me power. I have power. And he's given me a sound mind. So this is how you have to move. You speak it in faith. And as you speak it in faith, it becomes a weapon that cuts off the devil's head. It cuts off his power. So you're able to what? Tread over serpents and scorpions. You have to do it with your mouth. But if you don't know God's word, how can you use it? So you have to get familiar with the word of the Lord when you go into battle. So you go in focused, you go in with your weapons, you go in with authority, you go in with your crown, and you do spiritual warfare. Now what's going to happen is as you do this, you're going to go in very, very strong, and you're going to move. And then you're going to come to a point where there's going to be quietness. It's just like any battle. It's like a, any physical battle. You go in with might, and the battle lasts for a certain length of time. Sometimes it lasts all day long. Sometimes it may just be a part of your day. You may go into battle for 30 minutes or maybe an hour. You're focused on a certain thing. And then you're going to feel a lifting by the Spirit. There's going to be great peace. And that's the cue for you. Now I'm finished. So what do you do when you come out of that battle? You then stand. You've done your work. You've done your spiritual intercession. And now you stand. So again, we're looking at the letter Zane. The seventh letter of the alphabet, Zane, means what? Crown. It means weapon. And then it means sustain. So at this point, having done all, you stand. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So there's going to come a point that after you've prayed, after you've made supplication, you're going to be at peace. And then at that point, you stand. 
you are sustained by the Lord. If the enemy comes in and says, well, it's not going to happen. That's when you commit yourself to the Lord. Psalms 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Did you hear that? He's going to bring it to pass. So you have to learn that when the enemy comes right behind you to cause you to doubt, to cause you to fear, to cause you to feel hopeless, you're, gonna, you're not going to buy into that. You've done the battle. You've gone in with your crown, your authority. You've gone in with your weapon. Now it's time for you to stand. You got to have a measure of patience because you're not going to see things, you know, immediately, particularly when you're working with people, when you're praying for people, when you're doing battle for people. It does take time, but it's already done in the spirit realm. And you wait patiently, and the Lord's going to bring it to pass. Psalms 55, 22 Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. In other words, he's not going to permit you. He's never going to let righteous people come to ruin or to be destroyed. You do your part, my friend, my beloved, and he's going to do his part. He's going to be so with you. He is the breakthrough. All you got to do is follow him. Are you ready? Are you ready to go into battle? Yes, you are. Are you ready to wear your crown and let no man take it? Don't let anybody speak to you a lie and to take your crown. Take your weapon into battle. And then after you battle, stand and having done all to stand. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen.